Well, a little earlier this afternoon, I caught up with Gabriel Eleftherio, uh, head of space policy at the Policy Exchange Think Tank. And I started by asking him about the accusation over Russia carrying out a test of a space-based anti-satellite weapon back on July the 15th, and why the US and the UK were quite unhappy about it. It has been perceived in military um, circles as a test for a potential um, Russian anti-satellite weapon. So this was a satellite that, um, after achieving orbit, released a second smaller satellite, um, which in um, an operational sense, in a conflict situation, for example, um, could uh, be used to attack other satellites. So um, I think it is, um, you know, entirely appropriate to raise the alarm over that uh, possibility. And um, I think, um, you know, we need to be very careful about emerging Russian and indeed indeed Chinese anti-satellite capabilities in orbit. Is that where the new battle is going to be fought? Uh, the fact that if you take someone's satellites out, you instantly destroy their communication system. Is that why um, the security services are quite worried about these new capable satellites? Absolutely. Um, I should just uh, mention as well that uh, this kind of um, weapon um, or this manner of potentially attacking satellites in orbit is just one of many different ways of um, uh, carrying offensive operations against satellites in orbit. You can also target them directly with missiles launched from the Earth. You can target them uh, via cyber means. You can use lasers against them and and so on. So, you know, there's a whole range of anti-satellite weapons and means that uh, can be used to disable or destroy satellites. Um, It is uh, in, in a conflict situation, uh, satellites uh, will be probably one of the first targets. So, in a in a major war, uh, simply because they have become so fundamental to military operations in the modern world. Um, so, quite apart from the uh, just the reliance that uh, our economy in general has on satellites, for example, people probably don't don't realize that the the banking system and you know um, cash points for example wouldn't work uh, uh, without a satellite for for too long because satellites also uh, deliver very uh, precise timing uh, information so for example when you have transactions on the stock market you need to time to time stamp those transactions very 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 precisely across the world at the same time. Um, otherwise, you know, you don't know who's made the trade first. Um, and so if you, if that system doesn't, uh, you know, if that timing system um, uh, is, is not there, then uh, the entire financial uh, trading, trading system, this entire infrastructure, for example, uh, would collapse. Uh, the same is true for um, other critical infrastructures like telecommunications, as you said, um, you know, in order to route many calls over, uh, you know, phone calls over um, communication networks, you also need to time those calls very, very precisely and so on. So we're hugely dependent on, on satellites in the modern world. And from what I also understand, GPS being something that uh, satellites are integral to, GPS being something that's integral not only to everyday life, but for military purposes. And GPS, of course, when it comes to the UK, we were involved in the Galileo system, but uh, upon uh, Brexit, we uh, are now leaving that system. And I want to ask you about this new investment of just under £400 million uh, to take a 45% stake in a company called OneWeb, which is a low-Earth orbit satellite company. Is this uh, basically our replacement of the Galileo system? Well, uh, OneWeb was uh, set up to deliver broadband from orbit, so it was not set up as a GPS-type um, service. So, you know, 
basically GPS does your sat nav, so people might be more uh, comfortable if we use the term sat nav in terms of what GPS does and Galileo does. So OneWeb is not um, designed as a sat nav. Now um, there have been there has been speculation, um, as you as you mentioned in the press, that um, OneWeb could all could also be modified. In order to deliver sat nav services and to do what Galileo or, or GPS uh, would have done, but the, you know there are there are some technical uh, questions over the extent to which that is feasible, and you know we've we've seen some comments already in the press around, for example, um, the atomic clocks that you would have to fly on these satellites to get. Uh, that precise timing information, which is crucial to a sat nav function, and so on. So basically, OneWeb um, is there to, first of all, deliver broadband from orbit. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a long way away from um, actually becoming operational. So this is this is a, a, a company that um, this is a service that is supposed to require about 600 over 600 satellites in orbit. So at the time of uh, um, this acquisition, OneWeb had only launched about 70 satellites. So they still have wow. to complete the constellation in the first place. They still have to, you know, uh, ensure that that it operates properly. So all of this will require further investment. So this, in this, you know, buying OneWeb um, is one thing, but we need to understand that from this point uh, to a point where you can actually have um, a service, an operational service, uh, there's still a long way to go in terms of raising further finance and so on, which, you know, it, it's in, it, it, it is entirely possible. I mean, it's not impossible to do all of that, but we need to be aware of these uh, difficulties. And... Um, you asked about uh, so Galileo. So that that is a very separate, uh, very and very technical question. The extent to which OneWeb can be modified um, in an affordable way to to deliver that kind of service. Um, uh, you know, my uh, not only my um, assessment, but uh, also other you know there've been other analyses in the press um, is that that is very, very difficult to do uh, without much more investment. So um, to be fair, the government's uh, emphasis in uh, buying this uh, one web um, uh, satellite company has been really on, on broadband, on delivering that broadband capability from, from orbit. Gabriel, uh, we've been asking ourselves the question of uh, who owns space. Uh, I can imagine that it's probably quite a tricky question to answer, but... In, in the broader sense, we've seen uh, what's happened with Russia now, but can anybody, any country that has the capability, can they launch whatever they like into space and leave it there to orbit? Are there any rules? I mean, at what point do satellites sort of start crashing into each other? Yes, of course, there are, there are rules. There is an international space regime, as, as we call it, so the rules of the road uh, to do with the way in which you have to report uh, your launches. Um, there are, um, you know, uh, codes of conduct uh, for safe operation in orbit. Um, the, a lot of this data of about where the satellites are and so on is, is being shared publicly so that, um, you know, you can ensure safe operations in, in orbit. Um, and uh, for certain types of um, satellites in particular, um, you need to register them in advance with the uh, ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, in order to um, obtain uh, frequency, uh, transmission frequency rights and to obtain orbital, orbital slots in, uh, in certain... Um, right, so instances. there are orbital so, slots, so you have to sort of reserve a space, yeah, if you like, for your satellite. Exactly, so there is, you know, uh, space is, is very big, but uh, in, in, uh, for the orbits that are, 
useful for certain applications, that's actually, you know, a limited real estate. And so do people so, bid for them? Is there is there a bidding war for for the best slots? I mean, because I'm wondering, like, who owns it? Who says, yes, you can have a slot? This is how much it's going to cost? Or, no, you can't have a slot because someone else has got it before you. Yes, I mean, you know, the, the, this is uh, this is generally a matter of international negotiation. And, um, uh, you know, being a prime mover in space is also very important, which is, uh, again, why the acquisition of OneWeb is interesting from this that point of view, because it, it's, a, it's a form of uh, sort of planting a British flag in low Earth orbit, uh, in a sense. You know, um, so you know it's it's very it's very good to obtain a position in in that um, in that emerging uh, arena for um, you know space competition, um, and you obtain a platform on which to build in the future. But as I said, you know there are there are questions of uh, just how feasible this is and how affordable in the long term. Gabriel, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.